Well, hello everyone. My name is Roger Scott. I'm the head trader of WealthPress. And today I want to talk about the global news, but most importantly, we've got important data. We've got economic data, we've got jobless claims, and I've got a new setup for you. But let's start out with the global market events that happen overnight, and then we'll get into all of the uh, we'll, we'll start with the forest and then we'll get into the trees. So let's get into it right now. So European shares open higher Thursday. U.S. futures also advanced. It wasn't a very, very active day, even though earnings are in full season. Investors have been sizing up mixed corporate earnings and flaring tensions between U.S. and China. Folks, we're at it again. The ben benchmark Shanghai Composite gave up early gains, further roiling already fractious relations the u.s ordered china to close its consulate in houston that's not good saying it was necessary to protect american intellectual property oh yeah it's like that china said it would retaliate and there was speculation that u.s consult in wuhan central china might be ordered to close i'm pretty sure they're going to do that they're pretty sp spiteful those rascals but the hong kong newspaper south china morning post quoted unnamed source at china consulate u.s consulate in Chengdu, it west, its western Chinese Xuan province, would be the one targeted for closure. Either way, this is not good. Friction between China and U.S. right now, right before the elections and during this COVID-19 pandemic, is not good for anyone. Antagonisms are bound to heat up. Oh, yeah. We're about to start getting messy out there as presidential contender Biden and Trump ramp up their campaigns. Oh, what a period we live in, right? I mean, the, you couldn't make a better movie about this. You got the trade war, tension between China and, and U.S. You've got this COVID-19 and you've got the elections. I mean, what could be next, right? Shanghai Stock Exchange added companies from its technology board to the Shanghai Composite Index on Wednesday. Its first major change in three decades. That's pretty interesting. We make changes all the time. I mean, maybe once every quarter or two, but that's interesting. To help better reflect business performance, companies that received financial warnings will be removed from the index. The waiting period for adding newly traded stocks will be extended for as little as a few days. Not expecting a major uh, difference there. So far, going back to the U.S. markets, earnings have come out moderately better than expected. But keep in mind, the expectations have been worked so much lower. Discord between pub Republicans and Democrats over more financial aid to America and U.S. businesses is another worry. As states grapple with rebounds in COVID-19 cases, last I heard, California and Florida is just doing bad. Gold is actually holding up pretty well. I told you it would. And as a matter of fact, I think there's a lot more to go. And crude oil is holding on above $40, which is very important because it doesn't help U.S. companies make money, but it causes them to prevent bleeding because their cost for oil is very, very close. Now, before I get into the nitty gritty, I want to show you something that I am very, very nervous about. And yes, I talk about this all the time. And I'm going to talk about it again. Why? Because look at this. Look at this, folks. Fit NASDAQ 100, look at this. I want to show you this. This is the 50-day line. We are so close, it's sick. Look at this. And we're now heading back there. We've never went this high. We've came down just a little bit. And now we're starting to come up. How often do you see us holding above 90th percentile? Tell me, this is going back to 2007. What happens every time? Not once in a while, not half the time, not three quarters of the time, not nine out of 10 times, every time. What happens every time the NASDAQ 100, the, the number of stocks goes to 100 or 90 percentile on the 50 day moving average. It comes down, it comes down all the way. And we're stretched out again. We went like this, and now we're like this. It can't go much further back. So I'm very, very nervous about this. Moreover, oh yeah, yeah, this is where the heartburn starts. 200 day moving average, 80th percentile. Look at this, you gotta see this folks. You gotta see this with your own eyes. We went all the way here, and now we're almost at that stretch point. Now, when we go above 85th percentile on the 200 day, do you ever see us coming above and not coming down all the way? I mean, even, look, it happened here, it happens, and then it comes down. It happens, it comes down. The point is the market is stretched out. Momentum levels are stretched out, which means you've gotta be extra selective. Moreover, I wanted to wait for 
the jobless claims, the biggest report to come out, we're now finally, for the first time in over a month, we're now above the moving average. The moving average is 1.375 million. We're at 1.416 million. That's not good. We're closer to the upper end of the expectation, and the consensus was 1.3 million. We came in at 1.416. Now, I'm not going to make a big stink about this because, well, I mean, when you're talking 1.3 million, 1.5 million, the biggest potential jobless claim numbers in history or the worst numbers we've seen since I was born, you know, we went from the best numbers before I was born to the worst numbers. It's it's ironic, really. But I don't like the fact that we're finally above the moving average. The moving We've been below the moving average for several weeks now, almost the entire time, or at least the majority of the time post-February. But now we're getting above that. So fundamentals are also not, not so pretty. So again, I'm not liking the global markets. The NASDAQ 100, the, the number of stocks trading above the 200-day moving average is nosebleed levels. The number of stocks trading above the 50-day line is beyond nosebleed levels. That rubber band, this is usually how it's stretched. It's like this now. It's just, it can't go anywhere. So I am a slightly getting slightly neutral to bearish on the tech sector. But today I want to talk about a setup. This is one of my favorite setups. It's called 4x4. And this setup is how I determine if a stock is pulling back but very strongly. What we're looking for is three days for a stock to make a high and then three down days and for the stock to go up again. And it happened this time and it didn't really pull back that far. And I'm liking this setup right now. It looks like a nice little ascending triangle. Let me just uh, draw a little trend line here for you. So you could see exactly what I'm talking about. It's a nice little ascending triangle. So what I would do is I would put a buy stop. And again, Garmin is a more broader ba based. It's more for active. It's not really for cars because most cars have navigations, but it's mostly for active people. And right now we're in the middle of summer and people are active and they're looking for navigation systems and so forth. And Garmin is the leader. And I would put a buy stop right around the 10160 level and I would put a stop loss right below the 96 level, 9580 maybe, 95, right around here, 9575. But a buy stop right at the 10175 level on a stop and a liquidation right at the 9575 level. And I think you're going to get a two for one profit on this. Now, if you look at the profile of the stocks, like earning estimates, you could see it's had Earnings surprises, four positive quarters. It's got a high profit target of $118 a share. It's right now at $101 a share. And if you look at the profile of the stock, one-year return, three-year return, five-year return, everything is positive. I like that. Now, let's look at analyst ratings. Not so great, moderate. Not really anything crazy, which I don't I don't really blame right now. But again, I like the stock. I like the way it's breaking out. It's attracting some investors right now. Ticker symbol GRMN. -G -R and again, the reason why I like it is because it has three down days and an up day after making a high. The other stock that's doing that right now, these are this is my list of stocks that are doing, it's called 4x4, is a stock that I talked about the other day. It's called Lenar, Lenar Homes. Look at this here. And I like I like home builders right now. Again, it had a peak up. It had three down days, three days of closing lower, and then again, it's up again. So it has to make a swing high, and then it has to close lower three days in a row, and it did. It closed here at the high, and then here it closed near the low, and then it goes lower, lower, and then it's back up again. And here I would look at a buy stop around 72 level, right around here, 72.10 maybe. And I would put a liquidation stop at the 60, $61 level. I think the stock has a lot more to go. If I was to choose between two stocks, Lennar and, and, and um, what is it called? I keep calling it Gremlin. It's called Garmin, <laughs> Gremlin. Um, I would choose the I would choose Lennar Homes. I like them both, but I would choose Lennar Homes, and it has a high price target at 83, and it's at 70 right now. 
This is a better performance long-term stock. It has seven strong buy recommendations, earning estimates. Look at this, the last earning surprises, positive, all double digits, and mortgage mortgage applications for home builders and mortgage refinances, home builders. There's a lot of activity right now in residential real estate, and I've been talking the stock up for a while. So I like Lennar Homes better, but those are the two stocks that have the four by four pattern, and that's when we have a swing high, three lower closes, and the stock comes back up. So again, ticker symbol LEN, and the other one is ticker symbol GRMN. And I like them both quite a bit, but I like Lennar better. Now, folks, the current global health crisis has left a lot up to chance, but I'm certain that the rising stock that I'm watching could be explosive, I mean explosive, I want to give you the exact stock that's likely to make today's traders, get this, an easy $7,386, not in 10 years, 10 days, 10 days or less. That's pretty good, right? I've already predicted a 66.1% return on one of the stocks, and I've got a feeling, I've got a feeling this one's going to be even bigger. What are you waiting for? Really, what are you waiting for? Tap the link now to get the number one new stock pick. You're going to love this stock. Follow the link now, 66.1% on the previous one, up to $7,386 in 10 days or less. What are you waiting for? Tap the link below, get my number one stock pick. Do it now. And folks, if you're getting something out of these videos, post your post a comment below or send me an email at support at marketgeeks.com. That's support at marketgeeks.com. I read all your feedback. And most importantly, have a great day. Bye everyone.